Hey guys, so this is a little demo here on um, how to create your animatics using um, a method in Photoshop that's usually used for animation. So I have here a setup um, of my scene. Uh, this is, I gotta say, this is probably loosely based on um, Assassin's Creed or something. Um, and I have this idea here for this little thief or something that uh, is going to try to get past this guard and duck into um, into one of these uh, these these corners or these uh, these little entrances in here. So um, for something like this, um, I do have I do have this one character and um, I'll, I'll get to, to working with him a little bit later, but I've left the rest blank. Um, I put my environment here in a folder and it's just basically composed of just some simple drawings. Uh, but this is, you know, just knowing the environment here, it's going to get me a sense of like where uh, where this action is taking place. And I mentioned this here because it's relevant to, you know, film students as well, because, you know, the the uh, the performance or the actions of a character, they happen, um, you know, they need to happen in uh, in like a camera space. So you need to be thinking about you know, how much space do you actually have on the screen to do all this? And of course, there is camera movement too that can affect that, but we're not gonna be dealing with camera movement here. I mean, we could if this camera were to pan or to rotate or something like that, but this is just a sort of a simple character action because already it's just gonna be, uh, it's gonna be kind of complex as it is. So let's get right into it here. And I'm going to, um, let's just take layer one. I'm gonna call this guy guard, because that's what he is. And, um, here I'm going to start uh, drawing in my character here. So for the character, I thought of having him sort of leaned up against this wall here, um, just sort of roughing in these these little lines here. There we go, something like this. I think he's trying to lean in to listen here. Um, you know, maybe he's got his hand around the uh, the corner there already. Again, you know, as I'm doing this, like I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't have thought of that as uh, if I didn't have the environment here. So, you know, maybe he's carrying I don't know carrying a weapon or something, or maybe let's just leave him without a weapon. It's like he's running away or something, you know. All right, so that's good enough. All right, so this is my first pose here. My next pose here, I can go about uh, uh, just doing this here this way. Uh, what we could do here with pose uh, layer one is just turn this down here like so, so it's a little bit more uh, transparent. I'm also going to turn the environment down a little bit. Um, and let's keep going here with layer two. Layer two, um, we could just have them sort of, let's see what we're going to do with this here. So at this point here, I want them to peak Let's have a peek. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to have him peek uh, behind this uh, this corner here. Is that right? It seems to be a little bit bigger here. And here, uh, you know, this is kind of, it seems kind of silly, but I'm just sort of thinking about the silhouette. What would make an alarmed pose, you know? Um, would this be more readable? Or Because the other idea I had originally was uh, something uh, where he's sort of clutching the, uh, the side of the wall like that. I mean, that works too. I guess I kind of like that. But the other idea here, uh, just the reason I did that was um, just to sort of like make it more readable as a silhouette. Uh, you guys want to think about that when you're, um, you're, well, when you're telling your stories in general, you know, because uh, what would make the most, like, if I were to watch a movie, like, on mute, um, you know, could I tell the story, could I tell what was going on without hearing the, the audio or, you know, um, what would make the most, uh, what, would, what would communicate most in the pose here? So you want to have a strong uh, silhouette here. So here, got him leaning down like that, and he's about to make his run. And let's just keep going here. Um, layer three, we could have them. Let's just. Do this here. Here. 
And I'm really just animating the layers here. Whoops, not that one, of course. I'm sorry, I'm really just drawing in uh, the frames for the layers that I want. Let's see what I do here. All right, so he's starting to run. Um, then in here, we could have yet another pose here where it's further ahead here. And uh, I don't know, this is just to make it interesting here. We could uh, do a different pose somewhere in here. And again, you guys, I'm, I'm trying to work really fast just to get this example across. Um, I would probably, uh, on my own time, I'd go in and clean it up and I'd probably pause the video and maybe do that a little bit later. I don't know, something like that. Let's give it, let's do this the other way around. Oh, whatever, let's just do it this way here. And maybe somewhere in here, he's got this thing here where he stops. Yeah, let's just have him in final pose here just to get the point across here. So here he stopped. Excuse me. And he takes his little breath here. What is this? Let's see. Okay, good. That's a different frame. And then uh, maybe towards the uh, other one here, he runs off again. And what we could do in here too. It's a little tilted, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to press Control T and just take this and maybe get them upright a little more. Uh, so I just use the transform basically to shift uh, the character's pose a little bit. Uh, the free transform uh, controls here on um, on Photoshop. And what else? So in here, let's take one more, and I want to have them. I don't know, just to make it fun and dramatic here. Let's have them sort of jump in into this pose here. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, there we go. Uh, one thing I'm keeping in mind here is like what you call the line of action. Um, and that's going to be this sort of this, this arc here that sort of defines the, uh, the line or the, the direction that he's moving. I don't know, I'm just kind of making this up as I go here. And I really don't want him to break his neck. So yeah, so there we go, that's what hands are for, right? And, you know, being the, the skilled sort of ninja assassin or whatever that he is, I guess he is a, he's an assassin, right? Okay, so this is getting a little confusing. So let me um, let me turn this transparency down, and just you know, being as skilled as he is, he's going to push back again here and jump back in here. Another thing I do want to point out that's kind of interesting here is in the previous pose we had a uh, an arc, you know, the line of action. You see how it's all sort of flowing in like this way here. In this this pose that I'm currently drawing, it's now reversed itself to do a little arc that way, and that's just going to be um, it's just going to be kind of interesting. Um, and just a little um, a little note that I think is is kind of interesting to point out. Um, contrast is interesting. Um, I, I, I was going to say in animation, but I think in all sorts of things. Say in um, in film, even you know I've mentioned this to some of you guys in terms of timing. When you have like slow parts and then uh, 
parts that are faster. It just kind of makes uh, things interesting in music, even. You know, if you want to uh, if you want to accentuate a certain part, and then um, you know, then uh, the uh, the different parts are going to be uh, I don't know timed differently or have different levels. Contrast is kind of uh, it helps you make certain things more uh, more interesting and give emphasis to certain parts. You know, so this is all I have here for this, and I'm going to go with this. Uh, let's turn the transparencies back on for everything. All right, so there we go. Uh, my, my drawings are not completely detailed yet, but I'll, um, I'll go ahead. Oh yeah, let's do this. Let's do this guy here. Uh, let's see what we got with the guard here. So I'm going to give the guard one more pose here. Um, let's make this next pose here for the guard. And let's have him just turn around here. And this is, this is when he realizes that the coast is clear. I'm just kind of drawing over this guy here. Uh, maybe, you know what, maybe one more. Let's, let's maybe, maybe have him sort of turn around here. It's like, oh, did I hear something, you know? I hope I can see that. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty bad. Okay, this is the back. This is his back here. So let's do his little coat or something just so we can see. Um, I'm going to draw some hair or something, give him the back of his head. Sure, that's good. And then here, um, this is also the back. But I want him to look this way as if he's like he heard something. All right. Uh, so yeah, th that's that's my basic idea, and I'll um, I'll flesh those out later. Um, but this gives me uh, some poses to play with with the uh, for the guard here. Let me go ahead and bring the transparency up for the uh, the background, and um, and let's bring our poses back up here. And now <clears throat> I'm simply going to arrange these into uh, the timing here, and we can um, we can do this two different ways. Okay, <clears throat> let me show you the first way here. I'm going to pull up the timeline. Well, uh, the timeline is going to be useful for both of these ways here. So I'm going to pull up the timeline in, um, in Photoshop. And let's go ahead and create the video timeline. What I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to open up this timeline. And, you can, and like I said, I was working on this before here. Let's just take it back to uh, where what it was supposed to be before. So yeah, I've got to just scale this here. And uh, okay, so now this is the part here where we get to uh, to think about, you know, how long we want things to last here. So uh, this first pose here, which is um, layer one, I said, um, we can look at it in terms of seconds here. So what I'm going to just start doing here, layer one, two, this is layer one. All right, so here, uh, let's give it a play here. And if I uh, pull this little thing, much like you might be used to in After Effects here. If you, uh, um, if you zoom in here, you can see a little closer in, in, in the time. So I've got about a second here of time, and that, you know, that's how long that pose lasts before it disappears. I would say, you know what, just to sort of make it a little bit more interesting. Normally, um, I don't like things to last um, too long here, but uh, I, I think this part, you know, if the other action is going to be fast, then this part here... I think it should. We should give it enough time to breathe here, just to to sort of give it the uh, the preparation that it needs here. What's going on here? Oh, I know what's going on here. Is that this thing is not turned on? So those layers need to be visible here. And by pulling these little um, these little bars here, you can manipulate how long they last for. And then here, um, you know, we can get rid of this here. So it's about that side. 
And I'm just going to do some rough timing here. And we can just take this into uh, After Effects or something later. I mean, we could do that. We could just do this right uh, straight from here as well. And I can get a perfectly usable video out of Photoshop uh, in an MP4 format. So here, all I'm doing is just sort of uh, reducing the, um, the duration of these little drawings. It's a little bit of a pain that I have to do this for all of these here, but just to show you, and your action doesn't have to be complex either. You know, if we're talking about an animatic, um, you could do animatics in simpler forms, but I did want to show you, and, and you could do, you know, just like right from within Photoshop, you can do a perfectly fine uh, usable animatic here with just this here. So let's, let's take a look at what we were dealing with here. Let me just try out the timing here. So here it is waiting, ducks. It makes a run for it. At this point here, I'm thinking the run, that could be a little shorter, move this up, and that would mean all of this stuff needs to be closer in. You know what? Um, yeah, so when he gets here, okay, that's a pause. I want that to, to hold still a little bit. Let's bring that out a little ways here. And let's stretch that out a little ways. And then he goes for it again. Yeah, this is a little long. A little long. What is this? So sometimes you have to zoom in a little closer just to see these things here. Let's see what that feels like. That's a little long. I'll tell you what, just for the, uh, the purposes of just demonstrating the, um, the, the technique here, uh, I'm just going to complete this as a video here and I will uh, go back and just uh, finish it up later. As I said, my video has been crashing and, uh, you know, I don't want to I want to finish this so you can get this out to you guys. So, okay, so here we are. Uh, last thing I need to um, to animate here, depending on what you call animate, um, is this guard here. So I've got a couple poses that I pre prepared for him here. And I'm going to line these up here, <clears throat> actually, with, uh, with this guy's actions here. So look, this is layer two. I know that this is the point here that he's, he realizes the guard is turned around. So let's do this. I want to take guard uh, this guard's layer, bring it back here, line it up with that. Let's take this guy, line it up with this. And then here, th this, this could be further along here. Let's take this and move it forward. And let's turn them all back on here. So what do we got here? In fact, uh, let's bring this uh, a little earlier here. So I'm going to do this because it's uh, action and reaction, you know. So the he's he's only running because the guard has turned his back, and now he decides to make a run for it. And maybe when he stops here, what we could do. Is the guy just uh, turns back as if like, did I hear something? And then maybe, uh, you know what, maybe we can do this. We can go back to um, guard two. I'm going to copy this and make a another layer here for guard uh, four, which is pretty much the same thing. And let's just uh, end it right there. And he goes and he disappears into the darkness there. All right, so uh, yeah, that's um, that's what I've got. Last thing, just some tweaking here. I think what I'm going to do is just get this guy to be in line with his last pose here of this. And I'm going to just bring that. I'm missing one more thing here, which is this animation here, or this part of the animation, and that's in group. Uh, one. Oh, that's what this is here. 
these guys. Anyway, yeah, there we go. So I've got all I need here with this. Um, actually, there's a bit of uh, uh, animation here, um, but I could uh, work with that this way here. And now, uh, now I need to get this into a video here. So this part is really, really simple. All you have to do here is you can press this little arrow here at the bottom left of your key uh, of your your timeline window, um, or you can come up here to this here and you'll see some options here such as uh, render video. Uh, and that's that's how I'm going to uh, send this out as a video. One thing I do want to show you before, um, you know, while we're on this subject here, the panel options, if you pull up this, um, this gives you an options of, uh, of seeing the things up here listed as a time code as you're seeing now, or you can list them as a frame number. It, you know, it depends on your preference here. This, this doesn't concern us here for the, uh, the thumbnails right now, because we're not dealing with a uh, frame animation. And, well, not in this way here. Um, let's cancel that and let's just go and make this video. So either way, you know, either here, render video or, uh, or here. Um, and you can just press this. And it's firing up the video uh, uh, converter. And here, uh, let's go and keep running away. All right, I'm going to select the folder that I want, and that's the folder I have here. I'm going to use the median coder here um, to, um, I'm going to use the median coder here to create my, uh, my video. Uh, another thing, just so you guys know, another thing I could do as well is I could you make an image sequence from here. You know, I could do that, but I'm not interested in that right now. All I want is just a, just a straight up, uh, uh, uh an, to an H.264 video that I can put on the web and things. So in here, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to render this out. And, well, I guess I have that. Well, let's just do it again. I very much doubt that I did this. And it's rendering. It's just on my other window there. Um, and that should be it. So let me pull this up here, and I'll show you guys here. So this is what I have here, and you have the thief running away right here. This is the uh, the little video that I just did here in Photoshop. All within Photoshop, I did that video here. Okay, great. All right, so my last uh, thing that I'm going to show you here is um, let's pull up After Effects here. So I'm going to pull up After Effects here, and what I'm going to do here, this time, I mean, I already have a video out of this, but here's a different way that we can do things. If you wanted to use some of the features in After Effects, um, what you could do is you could take uh, all these layers here, and let's see, what is this? Group 1, let's give this a name, let's call that Environment. Um, sure, this is good. And then I'll just go ahead and save this uh, as Thief 2, I guess. And uh, in After Effects, I mean, you know, I've already done what I need to do, but this is a different way of doing it here. So here, um, let's go and bring this, uh, this uh, Photoshop file in. So I'm going to right click on the project window. I'm going to go to File. And let's go to Thief Running Away. I'm going to import this in. Hmm. Okay. Um, so yeah, so this is, uh, and my apologies, of course not. That's not what I wanted here. Uh, here, let's get rid of that. I'm going to go to um, import file, and let's bring in this Thief 2. That's my Photoshop file. I mean, you could bring in the movie, but that's just redundant. Why am I going to edit that here in, um, in After Effects? I mean, I could if I wanted to make things, give things effects or something like that. Anyway, with Thief 2, 
that's my Photoshop file. I'm going to bring this in as a composition. I'm going to retain the layer style, uh, layer sizes. And, um, and if I go into this little composition it made for me here, um, then you'll see that well, you should see, there we go. You should see all the layers and things that I had. And it's just, it's going to look very similar to my, um, to my, um, my Photoshop animation. Uh, really quick, just so you know, what I was doing here is um, I sometimes to increase the performance of the computer here, and when I'm just dealing with the timing, um, I, uh, I you can choose to cut down some of the resolution here of the uh, of the video. Uh, so I think I will do that here. Let's have this on half at least. Let's see, third. Okay, yeah, that we can do that. Um, anyway, uh, I just want to get a sense of the timing here. And you can see, uh, because I brought it in, I did some animation work with it in Photoshop already. It, you know, it remembers those video layers in, um, in After Effects, and it's done them all there here. So if I wanted to, what I could even do here, like if you wanted to, I mean, you could take advantage of the transform animations here. So for example, in here, uh, I could actually animate uh, positions and scales, for example. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it, it, I don't think that I don't like this effect too much here. Well, maybe it could. I guess it could. Let's do this. I'm going to do this and bring this uh, forward. Let's bring this back here. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so with this, um, maybe I could just bring this guy back here. And let's make him bigger. Uh, you know, on the the subject of making them bigger here, I probably want to adjust the uh, the anchor point, so I could do so with this anchor point tool here. Let's make sure I can find that. All right, let's try this out here. Yeah, so there you go. And then, of course, I could just cut this to where it needs to be. And you're going to get the idea here of movement uh, with that. So, I mean, you know, there's just some extra features that you can do here. And then from here, of course, um, all you would need to do is just render this out. And just once again, uh, you know, you can render out a little video in the H.264 format uh, by going to composition, uh, the composition menu, and then simply uh, adding the, this to the media encoder queue. You can find that in here, uh, add to media encoder queue, or you can go to file, um, export, um, add to media encoder queue. It's the same thing. Do that, and it fires up media encoder, which is currently on my other screen right now. And this should uh, appear here in just a second. There we are. And so here, this is the spot where I get to choose the formats here. And you can see there's a number of them here. The AVIs, which tend to be very, very big. Uh, AVIs uncompressed, even bigger. Um, H.264s are ideal for things like web and things like that. So you can use something like that. Uh, here you can further specify the options and then finally you can choose where you want to put this here and in my case yeah let's do this and let's do this the new export right i'll just do this and i'll press the little play button here and this is a fairly light video so it shouldn't take up too much time 
but you'll see it, uh, you'll see it do its thing in here. All right, so let's see what we got here. Thief new export. There we are. And if I fire this up, there's our animation. Yeah, the only there you are. So that's the only difference really. But uh, you know, there's are two different ways basically of getting um, some uh, frame animation. Uh, you know, if you prefer to work that way for your animatics or your your animations, um, that's a way of getting them out of Photoshop. If you if you want, um, I believe a lot of. Uh, uh, I don't know if they all have like timeline editors, but I think a lot of the apps that you might have on uh, on an iPad and things like that, they at least work with layers, you know? And so what you could do is you could work with your, your layers of animation and at the very least uh, bring it in somehow to uh, as a PSD to uh, After Effects or even to Photoshop and do your animation in there. So, you know, I just wanted to offer you guys a way of doing uh, some storyboards and things for, uh, or animatics, sorry, some animatics um, using some, uh, some different methods like this. So I hope you liked the video and I'll see you later.